Hi everyone, welcome back to the channel. Jaden Fedok here, and a couple of weeks ago, I got a brand new Trek Amanda SL5 disc 2020, and I am so excited to talk to you guys about it, what I love about it, and how amazing it was to transition from an aluminum Trek Alpha 1.1, which I've been riding since juniors racing back in high school, to the new carbon fiber frame 2020 model. So excited to talk about it and all of the amazing things that it has. This will be uh, my style of review. I don't necessarily have all of the technical specs ready to go, but um, I'm excited to talk about the things that I love about the bike, my experience riding it, and the transition between the aluminum frame that I used to have and the brand new carbon fiber. So let's get right into it. The first thing I wanted to mention is the comfort. So right, at, right when I got this bike, the first thing that I noticed was the comfort is completely next level. So going from aluminum frame, where you really do feel all the bumps and jarring, during your ride, but if you transition to carbon fiber, I think it has something to do with the stiffness of the frame as well as the, the additional width in the tires. It is the disc version, so it has 28 millimeter tires instead of the 25 that I've previously been riding. Uh, between 23 and 25 um, are the ones that I've been used to in the past and the racing wheels that I've used before. And I think over time they've realized that a wider tire is actually significantly better. And since it has disc, it can get a much wider tire on the same wheels. It doesn't have to worry about the brake calipers interfering with anything. So those two things I think made the hugest difference for the comfort of the bike. And I took it out this morning actually for a quick interval ride. So we'll check out that clip as well. Hey guys, as mentioned, talking about the smoothness and comfort of this bike, I figured I'd say a few words from the actual seat of the bike itself. Uh, here you go, quick look. But um, one of the things I wanted to mention is having the carbon fiber frame increases stiffness significantly, but I think one of the bigger differences is the 28 millimeter tires because when you're riding around and you've got so much extra grip, the tires don't have to ride with as, in, as high of a PSI. I think I'm running 60 or 70 instead of 120, so it makes a significant difference and I think it's excellent. I mean, compared to the aluminum frame I used to be riding, it's, it's a world of difference. Okay, intervals just ended, and absolutely, man, that's, that's the difference. The difference is the comfort level. Even when you're pushing hard, it is so much easier to give it your all and to keep going when it's a long interval set. So I will say the stiffness of the carbon fiber, wide tires, everything makes such a huge difference, combines to make it so much better. I mean, comparing to aluminum, it's it's a world of difference. So, absolutely a positive difference. Yeah, back to the studio. So overall, obviously the first thing is, hands down the comfort is completely different, especially transitioning from aluminum now to carbon fiber. Now, the second thing I wanna talk about is the fit. Now, this is what probably is the most subjective. Uh, most people have their idea of what fits best and what's the fastest. Um, the frame set itself is an H2, which I don't have all the information on the H1, H2, and H3, except the fact that um, it's varying levels of aggressive riding position. So the more aggressive your riding position, the less comfortable, the more flexibility required, but also you can be a little bit faster and more aerodynamic. So the frame that I have is an H2, which means that it is right in the middle, right in the sweet spot, I think, uh, still being fast, but being really comfortable over long rides. Uh, we did a 70 miler, a couple of days ago and it felt amazing. It felt just as good coming in 60, 70 miles as it did going out for the first 510. So hands down, having that comfort has definitely made a significant impact in the rest of my cycling because the more comfortable I am throughout the ride, the less fatigue I feel and the easier it is to push higher power throughout the entire ride without getting tired just because of the bumps and jars along the way. So. That's definitely a huge plus for the bike itself. The riding position is comfortable, but it is significantly further spaced out than the bike that I used to be riding. So again, that's a pretty subjective um, item there because everyone rides at a different riding position, what's more comfortable, what's fit to them. And of course, since there's a global situation going on right now, I was not able to go into my bike shop and get it fit specifically to me. Um, obviously it works well enough for me to get on the bike and ride, I've done right about 300 miles so far since I got it, and it's not uncomfortable, but I know once this all clears up in the world, I'm definitely going into the shop to see if I can get a, a little bit better fit 
and have that work a little bit better for my specific writing style. And one of the things that I absolutely have to mention is the fact that it is a beautiful bike. I mean, Trek does a really good job of making their bikes really impressive looking all the time, but as you can see uh, in the image there, it's, it's an impressive looking bike. I love the matte black color, um, the, the additions that they have with the red looks great. Um, the red and black is kind of a color scheme that I've used on my bikes, on all the bikes that I've had so far, so it's kind of nice to keep that going. And obviously the 2020 model just looks so clean. The carbon fiber looks great. Um, having the disc brakes, I personally think looks better because you don't have the brake calipers uh, in the way, but a lot of people have different opinions on that. That's, uh, that's how I feel though. I think probably the biggest adjustment that's gonna be for me is a through axle wheel. Now this is required when you use disc brakes. Um, it's getting more popular nowadays, but having Instead of just the, the, the axle itself that could come out and go in and quick release, it was, it was quite nice. But now you have a through axle, so it spins in, which really the only difference is that it's gonna require an adapter for me to use an indoor trainer, which is kind of a bummer. I don't have that adapter, so I'll have to order that online before I can get back on in Zwift. So I'll be getting one of those adapters for sure. Uh, for now, I'm on my aluminum bike when I need to Zwift, but <clears throat> I'd love to use my new carbon bike as soon as I can, which means I will be getting that adapter. Um, for now, it doesn't make that much of a difference, but I think having to buy a little extra things here and there is never too fun. Um, <laughs> this new bike also uses the Trek Duo Trap speed sensor and cadence sensor technology, so you know there's another 60, 70 bucks that you throw into the bike to be able to buy that speed sensor so that you can track your speed and cadence with the Trek specific version of the speed and cadence sensors, which goes right into the frame, which is very convenient, but then again, it's another charge that you pay for. One of the surprises for me, and I mentioned this on my video while I was riding, is that you run your tires at significantly lower PSI than you would on the bike that I used to use, where I was riding between 100 and 120 PSI all the time. Now it's closer to 60, 70, which I think vastly improves the comfort of the ride, but also I'm not quite as worried about things like punctures. Um, I know that having a wider tire is helpful, but it also you know, gives you a wider area to potentially run over a staple or a nail or a screw but I'm not quite as worried about it. I think the, the PSI being a lot lower gives you that comfort, but it also gives you a little bit more peace of mind as you're riding. Uh, one of the, the huge climbs that we recently did a few days ago, the downhill was like a dream on this new bike. It made a huge difference. It's so much easier to corner. The disc brakes make it so that your braking can be more consistent from the top of the mountain down to the bottom, and that helps you take more aggressive turns, better lines, and makes you a little bit faster, and that's always a plus. So this is definitely a short video, and again, as I mentioned, it doesn't have many of the technical specs that um, a lot of the other re review videos have, and I know I watched a ton of them when I was checking out my new bike and trying to decide which bike that I actually wanted, but this is my review. This is my personal opinion and what I think about the bike. I will say, hands down, it is an excellent bike, and anyone who's looking at a new bike should definitely consider the Trek Amanda SL5 disc and I will be happy to answer any questions that you have about the bike itself, um, what I think about it, uh, any other questions you may have in the comment section below. So please feel free to leave a comment. Uh, if you did like this video, you like my quick review, or you like the uh, new office studio that I'm using, please give this video a thumbs up. I appreciate that and it helps the channel a ton. So obviously that's gonna be a huge benefit to me. So thank you in advance. Um, if you like this content in general, please subscribe to the channel and we'll see you in the next video. Thanks.